Hello and welcome to another Pingcast Slack Spin. Today's Slack Spin is Salix OS. This is, of course, is based off of Slackware. Uh, I chose the LXDE version. Not going to select any parameters. Just going to boot the live ISO uh, with the default settings. While that's booting, we can take a look at the website. Alright, uh, if we go to download, we'll see we have XFCE, KDE, Fluxbox, LXDE, and Rat Poison versions. Rat Poison is a tiling standalone, well, I'm not sure if it's a standalone window manager, but it's a tiling window manager, and that you don't actually have window borders that you move around and manipulate. You use hotkeys to uh, toggle and switch between windows and resize. Uh, and yeah, it's just completely keyboard based. You still have a mouse because you have to move around and select things inside of your windows, but you don't use your mouse to manage your windows. It's all keyboard. Uh, some of you might like that, some of you might not. And in case you haven't gotten it yet, it's called Rat Poison because there's no mouse. Okay, if we go to Home, it's based on Slack or designed to be simple, fast, and easy to use. Uh, it's, it was actually a, uh, if we get on to the uh, Slack or, or the Salix OS Live ISO here, I'm going to use the US key map, and I'm going to auto-install. Uh, it, it's actually a pretty uh, small ISO, pretty slim, and it comes with a fair amount of applications. And we have three installation modes, just like Vector had full. Uh, this is basic and core, I believe, instead of basic, we had custom on Vector. But here you can see all the uh, features, one application per task. Completely compatible with Slackware. Uh, optimized for desktop usage. It's got uh, its own repository. It has Slap Git as the package manager. Uh, it does have a nice wallpaper. It has both 32-bit and 64-bit architectures. I think Vector only has 32-bit. And the ISO, of course, is CD-sized. Uh, I'm not sure if the KDE ISO is CD-sized. We can try, we can take a look, 674 megabytes, okay, even the KDE ISO fits onto a disk, so that's pretty good. Alright, I'm going to do a full install. I'm going to skip making a USB stick. I don't remember if Vector did that. It was 10 by 20, 1024 by 768 resolution, no kernel parameters, MVR install, UTC, American New York. Certainly there should be a default option. So that way I can keep it on US. Alright, rebooting now.
This actually seems to be giving me my 10 by 20, 1024 by 768 screen resolution, whereas Vector gave me the 800 by 600, even though I chose something bigger. So that's one area where uh, Salix's Vector beat, although Vector does have a more graphical install for this view who hate the end curses. If those of you are wondering why I choose LXDE over something else, I like LXDE. It's my favorite desk, full desktop environment uh, next to GNOME 3. So I just thought I'd do LXDE since not a whole lot of other people do uh, reviews on LXDE, unless it's a dedicated LXDE spin, but it gets overlooked, so I'd like to give this desktop a good try. I like the icon right here, very nice. Got some uh, good, got a good icon theme right here. Here we have the terminal, our file manager, and Maduri. Maduri is a uh, real lightweight browser, but unfortunately, unfortunately, it doesn't work with absolutely everything. For instance, if you're to log into Facebook. Uh, earlier, uh, last year, when I was trying to do out for the first time, I decided to check it out with Facebook, and it couldn't work with the chat. So Maduri doesn't completely work with everything. Although it is lighter than Chromium, I do believe, so if you need a good, lightweight browser, and uh, what you're doing at the moment doesn't require support for everything, then uh, this would be a good browser to use and it can't connect to the internet. Let me check my virtual box settings. Oh crud, I selected something wrong. I meant to select bridge adapter. I'll just restart this. We'll shut it down, change the settings, then restart. Alright, and we're back. Let's see if it'll connect this time. Alright, here we go. And we're using WICD just like in Vector. Seems to be connected. No, we're not. Here we go. Here we have the IRC. You have your nickname, and then it goes to Salix. I'm going to guess it's on the free node network. This must be linked to their website. And I'm guessing they're using Maduri as their default browser, which is pretty lightweight, but again, doesn't work with everything. And we have PCMANFM as the file manager. And in accessories we have Archive Manager for archiving. Hmm, can you privacy assistant? Yep, that's for key rings. Sort of like the gnome key ring, I guess. And we have Calculator. Must be G Calculator, I guess. For GTK. And we have Leafpad for our 
text editor, which is the LXDE text editor. It's kind of like Notepad, if uh, you're familiar with Windows. Here you can search for files and folders. Then we have XPad for note-taking. That's it for accessories. In the graphics, we have Simple Scan to scan documents. Junior, oh, an image viewer. I've never used this before. I wonder if we have any images to open. Looks like I got my 800 by 600 resolution. Anyways, maybe installing the guest edition so it'll fix it. Anyways, here's the uh, the uh, image right here, and I think I recognize this image viewer. I think I've used this before. I just didn't know the name of it. I really like this one. We have MT Paint. I think Leszek Lesnar did a screen cast on this. On this, I don't think the UI was too terribly great, but it's a nice lightweight paint application. Uh, so if you're running an old computer, you, you could have a paint application, photo application. I'm not sure the full capabilities of this program. And in internet, we have Clause Mail for our email needs for our. Uh, email client and Maduri again we have Pigeon for our uh, online chat needs, our IM needs which I have said in the past that I really like it's a good uh, client we have transmission for torrenting stuff uh, and WICD again GFTP, and in our office we have Abby Word for our uh, word processor and GNU Merrick for our spreadsheets, but no PowerPoint equivalent. ePDF viewer for PDFs, and we have Genie in programming, which I still don't know what this does. This compiler right here, so I am guessing that it is for programming and maybe C, C++. Uh, sound and video, I've never used Asunder. That's for ripping, okay. Bracero for burning, I like Bracero. <laughs> Uh, Exhale, yeah, that's a good one. You can play your music, get music through your files, uh, stream radio stations, very good. And multi, oh, install multimedia codecs, so we can install them later, they're not part of the install. Um, Volti, I guess it's some sort of, yep. It's a audio mixer, control panel, uh, and Dua Media Player. I've never seen this before. Hmm. Looks to be uh, very uh, minimalistic. Looks like a good UI. Might have to give that a try. Uh, and under system tools, also sound card. I don't know what .new is. Let's see. 
here. Oh, this must be made for making configuration files. Or maybe text editing. As for managing config files, I did not know such a thing existed. One thing I like about uh, reviewing these Slacker-based distros is I see tons of applications that I've never seen before. Uh, G-slapped. Uh, we saw in the last ones the GUI front end to slapped get. Uh, finally popped up. It's kind of like Synaptic, you can update your system, mark all upgrades, you can search for what you need, it's like Synaptic. Um, and here under host names, it must be to change your host name. So we can move it uh, from the default. Dark Star is what you get from uh, a Slackware system if you don't do the whole configure network thing during the Slackware install. So I could change it to uh, SalixOS, example.net, I could say uh, Salix.net, OK. Ah, huh, still says Darkstar. Anywho. Here we can set up our keyboard, Lilo, for uh, managing the bootloader. Here we can manage our printing. You can install a NDIS wrapper. That's a wrapper for, I think, XP wireless drivers. Uh, it's a good uh, workaround for uh, wireless cards if it's uh, not working, but you'll probably have to download this from the Internet, so you'll obviously need a machine with Internet to get that. Uh, we can do new login. I guess that returns you to the login screen login. Someone else. Here we have the new login in the window. It's just xnest on the local host. And we can change the system clock. Slept SRC. I've never seen this before. It must be for changing your sources, sort of like. Uh, if you were to access your sources in um, apt, I suppose. Hmm. Not really working with me here. Doesn't seem to be working at the moment. We can manage our running processes. This I think might be the XFCE task manager. Ooh, I like that. You can show root tasks, get rid of them. And we can change the refresh rate. Alright, users and groups for managing uh, users and groups, of course, but the UI is a bit different than what you'd expect if, well, it's different from the Ubuntu system, which is probably what you'd expect, which of course is probably what you'd see on PinGuy for all of you PinGuy users. Uh, I kind of like this interface better. Yeah, I really like this user settings. Very nice interface. Alright. You can customize look and feel. Let's see what themes it has. It just it kinda has the defaults.
These seems to be the same. Hmm. have Java. Just a Java control panel, which does not look too pretty. We here we can check our monitor settings. And that's OB Confer Managing Open Box. So we can change the open box look and feel. Yeah, I think it's better. There you go, that looks better. And basically LXDE it just uses open box as the default window manager, but you can make LXDs, any window manager you want, including CompIs for any of you CompIs fans out there. But OpenBox is a very customizable. Uh, yeah, you can um, you can you're very uh, you can have new windows work with all monitors, active monitors, or whichever one has your mouse, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's very customizable window manager. You can set margins so that it doesn't go uh, into the margin. Some of you guys have seen my one-liner conky on my pin guy system. With my open box set up, I have a margin set so it doesn't go up into the top of the screen and my conky is not blocked and it's always visible all the time and I can always monitor my system. Here we can configure our pop-up settings, which I've never seen on an LXDE distro before, or an LXDE release. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Let's see what screen savers we have. Yeah. Let's get to the good one. Let's get to the best one. Where's the, the uh, GL matrix? There we go. There's my. I have my GL matrix. Ah, yeah. And that's it, other than the run box and our logout dialog. So, uh, I can't really compare this to Vector because I did different desktops, so the applications are a bit different. Um, to be honest, Maduri is good lightweight browser, but I'd go ahead and use Chromium because it works with everything. Maduri doesn't work with absolutely everything, at least not the last time I tried it, but I am fairly certain it still probably doesn't work with everything. Uh, it, uh, uh, I do kind of like, uh, some of the other applications. I mean, it's pretty functional, especially considering the size of the ISO. I mean, they're able to fit their KDE on a CD. That's pretty awesome. And even with the small size, they're able to give you a good amount of functionality. I mean, uh, other than, I don't have a PowerPoint equivalent, but I really don't know what lightweight application you can use. I've always seen just Abby Word and GNU Merrick on LXDE releases of anything. But they, uh, you got all the bells and whistles you could possibly need. And a little more. 
uh, got some nice interfaces on these items. Uh, I'd have to give this a pretty good review. I really like this. This, is, of course, is just a glance that I haven't really consistently used this, but I probably could use it pretty well. I mean, I really can't think of anything that would be missing other than Codex, which you can install. Uh, as a standard themes, uh, there's no LXDE. I don't think there's an LXDE for Vector. Vector ha actually had multiple themes. Um, I don't think the. Uh, I'm not sure if the other versions of Solix have their own themes. They just stick to default, or if the default look is just some something that normally comes with the desktop. But they don't really have their own theme. But they have a nice icon right here. They have a good wallpaper. I like the wallpaper. Uh, good desktop settings. We can set our wallpaper. The LXDE preferences. You can show the uh, menus for the WM when you click it. Now I'm using my open box menu. I mean, it just, it can do everything, absolutely everything that you could possibly need, but with lightweight applications and a very slim ISO size. So I'm going to give this a two thumbs up. And I find it, uh, I, I think it'd be pretty easy for you to use, but what do you guys think? Uh, leave a comment, tell me, do you like this, do you not like this? Uh, do you like the applications? It's selected by default. Uh, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Would you use this? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pingcasts and this Slack Spin, and stay tuned for another one.